So in this video, we're going to talk about average velocity, instantaneous velocity, position functions, and all the little questions that go with that type of problem. So let's start with this one. A ball is thrown straight upward from a building. So let's draw a picture. This is like a calculus slash projectile motion type problem. So we got this ball, and it's going to go up, and then it's going to go down. Now, in reality, it goes straight up and then straight down. So just keep that in mind. It really doesn't move to the right. Now, we're given the position function that describes the height of this ball above ground level. So S, let's say at this point, will be the difference between ground level and the point of interest. It could be any point along this trajectory, depending on what T is. So the first question asks, what is the height of the building? How can we determine the height of the building? So going back to this picture, what is the time when the ball was thrown upward from the building? That is where it started to leave. That's the beginning, the initial position. So at that point, t is equal to 0. For this type of trajectory, there's three points of interest, the beginning, the maximum height, and just before it hits the ground. At point A, t is equal to 0. We don't know what the time is at point B or point C, but we can figure that out later. So in order to determine the height of the building, we need to evaluate S when t is 0. So we just got to substitute t with 0 into that equation. So it's going to be negative 4.9 times 0 squared plus 9.8 times 0 plus 200. So this is all 0. Therefore, the initial height of the building is 200 units. Now, I didn't really describe what the position is, but you can tell based on this number, 4.9. If you see that, it's going to be in meters per second. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And this formula comes from this equation. H is equal to the initial height, or rather you've probably seen it like this in physics. Y final is equal to Y initial plus V Y initial T minus one half G T squared, where G is 9.8. So half of 9.8 will give you 4.9. So since the acceleration is in meters per second squared, the height is going to be in meters, and the time is in seconds. So the height of the building is 200 meters. Now let's move on to part B. What is the initial velocity of the ball? To find the initial velocity, we need to find the derivative of the position function. So the derivative of s of t, the position function, will give us the velocity function. So the derivative of negative 4.9t squared, that's going to be negative 4.9. The derivative of t squared is 2t. And the derivative of 98t is just 98. So v of t is going to be negative 4.9 times 2 is negative 9.8. So it's negative 9.8t plus 98. Now to calculate the initial velocity, we need to replace t with 0. So it's going to be 0 plus 98. So v0 is 98. That's the initial velocity in the y direction. Now let's move on to part c. Actually, before we do that, let's talk about the equations. So in physics, I mentioned that the height above the ground, y final, is equal to y initial plus v y initial t minus one-half gt squared. y initial represents the height of the building. It's 200. vy initial is the vertical speed. And as you can see, it's 98, which is what we have. That's the initial vertical speed in the y direction. Well, technically, it's the initial vertical velocity. And then 
If you see 4.9, that means g is 9.8. And so the units for g is meters per second squared, which means this is going to be in meters, and the time is in seconds. Now, in calculus, you might see a function that looks like this. S of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus v initial t plus s initial. If this number is negative 4.9 in front of t squared, then you know you're dealing with meters and seconds. Those are the units. But if you see negative 16, then you're dealing with feet and seconds because g is about 32 feet per second squared, but 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you see a negative 16, that means t is in seconds, and the height is in feet as opposed to meters. Now, s initial corresponds to this number. As you can see, that's the height of the building. And v initial, which is the same as vy initial, that's the velocity in the y direction, the initial velocity. It's always going to be this number in front of t which, as you can see, is 98. So I want you to see the relationship between these two equations with the height of the building and the initial velocity. Now let's move on to the next part. What is the instantaneous velocity of the ball at t equals 5? So we have the velocity function. And we said it was negative 9.8t plus 98. So if we plug in a t value, this will give us the instantaneous velocity at any time t. So to find it at t equals 5, it's simply going to be negative 9.8 times 5 plus 98. Negative 9.8 times 5 is negative 49. And negative 49 plus 98 is positive 49. Now, what does this number tell us? What does it mean? When the ball is going up, the velocity in the y direction is positive. But when it's going down, it's negative. So at t equals 5, the ball is somewhere between a and b. That means the time it takes to get to point b is higher than 5. So keep that in mind. So right now, the ball could be maybe at this position, but it's going up. So it has a positive velocity. But when it's going down, it's going to have a negative velocity. Now let's move on to part D. For right now, I'm going to rewrite this answer to use it as comparison later. Now, what is the average velocity of the ball on the interval 4 to 6? To determine the average velocity, we need to use the position function. What we need to do is we need two points, and we need to determine the slope between those two points. A secant line touches the curve at two points. And so the average velocity can be used to estimate the instantaneous velocity. So make sure you understand this. The average velocity represents the slope of the secant line. The instantaneous velocity represents the slope of the tangent line. And both the secant line and the tangent line represents it's a line on the position function, not the velocity function. So this white line represents the position function. I'm going to choose two points at random. Let's use uh, these two points. So this would be a secant line. Now let's say if I want to estimate the slope of a tangent line, here it would be. Now, notice that the instantaneous velocity was calculated when t is 5. And 5 is in between 4 and 6. So you can estimate the instantaneous velocity by calculating the average velocity at two points where this point is the midpoint of those two points, just as 5 is the midpoint between 4 and 6. And keep in mind, a tangent line only touches the curve at one point. The secant line touches it at two points. So let's say if we have a curve that looks like this. And let's say we want to estimate the slope of the tangent line at that point. So we can calculate the slope of the secant line. But these two points 
we need one to be on the left, one to be on the right, such that this point is the midpoint of these two points. As these two points move closer towards the midpoint, the slope of the secant line will approach the slope of the tangent line. So if we pick two points that are closer to it, the slope of this secant line, the green line, is going to be a lot closer to the slope of the tangent line. So let's calculate the average velocity on the interval 4 to 6. So the average velocity is going to be s of b minus s of a over b minus a, where a is 4, b is 6. So it's going to be s of 6 minus s of 4 over 6 minus 4. And if you average 4 and 6, you get 5. So this is going to approximately be equal to v of 5. So we should expect an answer that's somewhat close to 49. So s of 6, let's plug it into this formula. That's going to be, I'm going to do it separately first because of lack of space. So it's negative 4.9 times 6 squared plus 9, 98 rather, I was going to say 9.8, 98 times 6 plus 200. So I got 611.6, and this is in meters, and then S of 4, let's see what that's going to be. So that's 513.6. So this is going to be 611.6 minus 513.6, and 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. 611.6 minus 513.6, that's 98. And 98 divided by 2 is 49. It turns out that in this particular instance, it was exactly 49. Now, if we try 4.9 and 5.1, it should be very close to that number as well. This could be just a coincidence that it was 49. So there's no need to do uh, this one, but you could do it if you want to. Let's move on to part E. How long will it take for the ball to hit the ground? So how long will it take for it to reach position C? Now, what is the height at position C? The height is 0 because it's at ground level. So all we need to do is replace S of T with 0 and solve for T. So 0 is equal to negative 4.9 T squared plus 98 T plus 200. If you want to, you can multiply everything by negative 1. And so this would be 4.9 T squared minus 98 T minus 200. And then we could use the quadratic formula. So it's going to be negative b. In this case, b is negative 98. So this is a, b, and c. So it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. 2 times 4.9, that's going to be 9.8. So this is going to be positive 98, and then we're going to have 98 squared minus 4.9 times 4 times negative 200. And that's going to be 13,524. The square root of 13,524 is 116.3. Now, t is not going to be negative because it was 0 at a, so we need a positive answer. So it's going to be 98 plus 
and then divide it by 9.8. So it's going to take 21.87, or I'm going to round into 9, 21.9 seconds for the ball to reach the ground. Now, part F, how fast is the ball moving before it hits the ground? So let's go back to the velocity function. V of t is negative 9.8t plus 98. So we're looking for V of 21.9 or 21.87. So it's negative 9.8 times 21.87 plus 98. So the answer is negative 116.3 meters per second. But let's talk about it. Now the question in part F asks, how fast is the ball moving before it hits the ground? Is it asking for speed or velocity? How fast is the measure of speed? We are measuring the magnitude, not the direction of this quantity. So the sign doesn't matter. Velocity can be positive or negative because direction is important, but speed is always positive. So how fast it's moving? It's going to be positive 116.3 meters per second. Now, if it asks for the velocity, then we would use negative 116.3 meters per second. But since we're looking for the speed, we need to make that answer positive. Watch out for those questions. Now what about part G? How long will it take for the ball to reach its highest point? So at what time will it reach point B? How can we figure that out? At point B, you need to realize that the velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. So let's start with the velocity function. And we're gonna set V of t equal to zero. And let's calculate t. So I'm going to move the 98 to the other side. So negative 98 is equal to negative 9.8t. If we divide both sides by negative 9.8, then t is going to equal 10. So it takes 10 seconds for the ball to reach to position b. Now keep in mind, this picture is not drawn to scale. It looks like the right side is a lot bigger than the left side. Now, part H, determine the maximum height of the ball above the ground level. Now, the maximum height occurs at position B. That's the highest point. So all we need to do is evaluate S when T is 0. So it's going to be negative 4.9 times 10 squared plus 98 times 10 plus 200. So 10 squared is 100 times 4.9. That's 490. 98 times 10 is 980. And negative 490 plus 980. That's 490 plus 200. So the maximum height is 690 meters. And that's it. So now you know how to answer some questions relating to position functions, average velocity, and instantaneous velocity. Thanks for watching.